Hi, this is Katie with craftingwithkatie.com and today I'm going to show you how you can use Silhouette Studio to pull in different patterns of paper for any kind of project you're working on. So I made this card here using some pattern papers that I got from jessicasprague.com. It's the Echo Park Fall Fever Collection. And I'm just going to take you through the steps I did um, to make this. So the first step was to make my background paper with the leaves. So I used the rectangle tool for that, and once I just made my rectangle, I selected it, went to the size, and changed the width to five and a half inches to fit my card, and the height at four inches. And then over here, I have my window open that shows the papers from this collection. So for the background, I used the leaves, so all I'm going to do is drag it into it. Now I know a lot of people have the PC version of Silhouette Studio and on there, and then I also used to be able to do this on the Mac but I can't anymore, you can actually import all of your pattern papers and have them saved within Silhouette Studio. For some reason, reason the latest version um, for the Mac is not allowing me to do that anymore, but it's really not that big of a deal to have the window open and drag it over. So here it is, and if you can see on my card, I had the leaves scaled a little bit larger and I also didn't have them as bright because if you see how vivid this pattern is, if it was behind this tree that I cut, it would just be a little too much. So I'm going to show you how you can edit the pattern. So it's already selected, so all I have to do is click on the little polka dot of paper here and scroll down to advanced options. So the first thing I'm going to do is scale the pattern. So all you have to do for that is, you know, you can drag it either direction to make the leaves bigger or smaller. So I'll just do it like that. And then to make it not as bright, you can change the transparency. And I pulled it back to about 50%. There we go. So that's that piece of paper. Now another piece I'm going to need is this long stripe. So for that one, I'm going to take a rectangle again, and this one I'm going to size at five and a half inches of width and 0.75 inches for the height. And then once again, you just take the pattern you want, drag it right in there. Now I want to show you another option here um, with the pattern paper that I didn't do, but it's nice to know about. So again, click on the pattern paper, the little polka dot icon, go to advanced images, and you do have the option of rotating your pattern. I could rotate it 90 degrees. I could come down here and type in a specific number like 45 degrees. Or you can, oh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know if typing it works, but you can drag this however you want. If you want like a diagonal stripe, isn't that cute? So I just kept it like that. So we'll go back to there. Now for the wood grain pattern here, I used it as you can see for several things. I took a strip of it for the bottom of my card. I used it to cut out my tree trunk. And this tree I actually cut from the Cricut um, Stretch Your Imagination cartridge. So I made a piece big enough to be able to do that. And then also to cut out these letters with the My Creative Time font die. So I'm going to make a rectangle that's five and a half inches wide again. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the height so it's big enough for all of that. And you can go to the scale window or you can even drag it. Sometimes it's hard to get exactly what you want. So that's close enough. All right, and I'll put the wood grain in here. Okay, so if you look back at my card, we have the wood grain, the striped, the leaves. This um, cute little die is another My Creative Time die called the Extra Large Label Die. For the stitched label part, I actually made some paper that matched the leaf paper perfectly. So let me show you how I did that. I just went ahead and made a rectangle large enough for the die, and it was about three and a quarter inches by three and a half is good. And then this is a really fun trick. So if you go to the little paint bucket here and go to advanced options and then click on the, the image that you want to fill with the color, which is this one here, 
then click on the eyedropper and you can choose any background color that you like. So if I clicked here, I get that pink color. But that's not what I want. I actually want this color. So you can make your paper, your solid papers, totally match your pattern papers. So that is about all that I did. I went ahead and printed those out, used my My Creative Time dies for the letters and the label, used my Cricut for the tree, and then I stamped this um, sentiment with a My Creative Time stamp. And if you go to my blog, www.craftingwithkatie.com, you can get specifics on all of these sets and links to them. Thanks for, so much for watching. Bye-bye.